Good morning. Can I start with a question? Uh, can I get a show of hands? Who of you know Rancher? Anyone knows Rancher? Oh, I see a lot of hands. Who actually knows that Rancher is part of Sousa? Yeah, that's not as many people. Uh, we're going to talk about that now. So, uh, my name is DP van Leeuwen. Everybody calls me DP. It's a too long Dutch name otherwise. Uh, and I'm the CEO of Sousa. Now, the first thing that's probably popping up in most of your head is like, what is a CEO doing at stage on KubeCon? Well, I got to admit, uh, I started 40 years, I'm that old already, 40 years ago about as a developer myself. And oh, did I wish at that time that there was something like open source. My codes would have been so much better, and I would have been able to learn so much from everybody around. But now there is open source. And open source runs through my veins. It runs through the veins of everybody at SUSE. And I'm absolutely sure it runs through the veins of most of you here in this room. So this is a very important event to us. But let me first talk a little bit about open source for a moment. Because before there was open source, there was a lot of proprietary not that it was bad, but it was all developed by single companies with single ideas, and all they did was capitalizing on it by owning the intellectual property and selling the license. And we all know that that model stifled innovation. It didn't really go as fast as it goes right now. And again, when I was young, if I, did, I, did wanted, to, if I wanted to become a developer, you had to show all your credentials and you had to sort of like theoretically prove that you could contribute to something. But thanks to open source, anybody in the world who has an idea, who likes to program, who likes to contribute, has the ability to do so. And thanks to open source and to the principle of meritocracy, the best ideas win. The best ideas won, and they still do. And this is why we're all here, because this is the largest amount of intellectual property that you can get with all of us around the world uh, collectively contributing to something great. So how did that start? Well, we all know probably, uh, because nobody is that young, that it started with Linux. Um, but even when Linux came to the market, and even though it was more secure, it was better quality, and had all these benefits of open source, companies did not quite trust it yet. And I was there at that time. I had to listen to all the stories like, oh, it's not secure. It's not ready for business. There's so many things that we, we don't trust about open source. Until companies like SUSE developed a business model that allows you to consume from all the community projects the best products and run them in a business-critical enterprise way. And look, today, most business, if, businesses, if not all, depend on open source solutions. And this is how business goes. So from here on after, we saw open source spread rapidly to the cloud, to the edge, and even now to AI. It's all open source. This massive, massive innovation that we've seen is thanks to us as a community. Then what about Kubernetes? Because I spoke about Linux. And by the way, Linux is like 30 plus years old. Kubernetes, however, was announced in June 2014 and rapidly got acceptance and rapidly became an industry standard for cloud native development. I would say happy 10th anniversary Kubernetes because that's 10 years ago now. Time flies. There is no compelling proprietary alternative to Kubernetes today. So why did Kubernetes win? Well, because it was open source. It was multi-vendor. And what I think is most important, there was a community, a community of passionate people contributing to it. Now, every leading solution, whether it's in the data center all the way to the cloud and the edge, is based on Kubernetes. And it's the best technology thanks to your participation. From Kubernetes, Quickly to AI, because <clears throat> we can't ignore AI these days. It's everywhere. Super exciting. And again, in AI, we see open source 
defining the standards, open source helping it grow, and becoming something really, really meaningful. But again here, Kubernetes is a great platform to deploy your AI workloads on, and it works really well. This then brings me to the infinite potential of open source. Because now that we've seen what collaboration can do and how you can think that and take somebody's idea, build up and build upon it and build something new, there are things that we can not even imagine that will happen in the future. Who would have thought, for example, that 10 years ago, when Kubernetes was just born, that it would now run in satellites? Uh, for those of you who know K3S, K3S is a single binary Kubernetes. It is that small, it runs on a Raspberry Pi. Currently, the 5G satellite networks all above us use K3S to run. The sky is the limit with Kubernetes. And there's many, many more dis domains that Kubernetes is disrupting and will disrupt in the future. We can't even, you know, make it up, but think about edge and AI and all the things that are happening right now. So now back to SUSE. We at SUSE, we're a proud, committed member to the open source community. In the past few years, we've seen more and more headwinds for open source. And the one thing I want to say that at SUSE, we are committed and we will continue to contribute to all these open source projects. And moreover, we're also committed to protect the open source ethos. That's why CNCF events like this, like KubeCon, are so super important to us. And we are very, very proud to be here and build Kubernetes together with all of you. With that, all I want to do is invite you to come have a look at our stand D2, where we have a lot of exciting stuff around full stack observability, AI, and all the many great things that we're all doing with Kubernetes. Thank you very much.